All right, welcome to the one o'clock class. You should be very excited at home. I'll let you calm down before I start. Okay, you've calmed down at home. Now, today, uh, you, the kids are gonna be quieter than usual because it's gonna be on the internet this class and you can see yourself, except you won't see yourself, you'll see me. Okay, but maybe you can hear yourself. So, uh, this is round four of the London Chess Classic, which was being shown behind me when we turned it off. And one game is still going on. You at home, the London Chess Classic's been over for two weeks, but we're excited here. Today is Anand's birthday, but not for you at home. Okay, so we're gonna look at two games that I played in the last month, okay? My first opponent played funny, and since you all play funny, I thought you'd like this game, okay? My opponent did everything wrong, so he lost. So when I say he did everything wrong, are, are, your, are your ears burning? Because it's cold in here, so you know. That would be good, right? Also, get the cauliflower out of your ears, okay? And take the banana out of your ears. That keeps the alligators away. I can prove it. Who wants me to prove it? Okay, are there any alligators in here? No. There you, there you go, right? No, 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 that's, not, that's a crocodile. That's not an alligator. Okay, so my opponent played very silly. And if you play very silly, you might lose. So you probably shouldn't do that. And this is a really good example of playing silly. He decided that pawns don't go two squares. Okay, now pawns can go one or two squares on their first move, but maybe he didn't know that. His rating was about 1350. So they actually wrote several volumes of books of stuff he didn't know. They're still writing it. Okay. By the way, the kids get nothing. They get nothing. Okay. The one kid's like, what's a tabula rasa? Okay. So he played e3, and then he played d3, and then he played knight e2. So he's making sure he goes uh, as close as possible to himself. He's not moving out. Obviously, the knight could go to f3, attacking my pawn. And the pawns could go two squares, but he doesn't do that. See what he does? He plays what we call passively. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't make any threats. He blocked both of his bishops. Boo! Now his bishops can't move. Okay, terrible. What about my bishops? My bishops get the green light, or in this case, the green arrow. There's only one thing better than black's position. Does anybody know what it is? What's better than black's position? You, incorrect. Everything. Ooh, that was a good answer. That wasn't as funny as my answer, but it was close. The correct answer is the new Star Wars movie. That's better than my position. What? I'm a grandmaster. I saw things before they were even filmed. Okay, I was in that movie, but they cut my scene because I wanted a higher salary. Okay, see I'm a vegetarian, and I said I wanted celery. They thought I said salary, so I got fired. Terrible. That's why I'm teaching this class. Okay. They said I was going rogue. <sighs> All right. So, like one kid got that joke. He, he actually didn't get it, but he's laughing anyway. That he's doing this. Does he think I got it? Okay. Now, when I play this position with white, which I have, but don't tell anybody, <sighs> I notice that my bishops can't move, and I like to move my bishops. So I do something you've never heard of unless you speak Italian. Who speaks Italian? Hey, nobody's lying in this class. Good job. Okay. And I fianchetto my bishops. I play g3 and b3, and I put my bishops here because then my bishops moved out. Okay. And that's called the hippopotamus because you are what you eat when oh, I'm a vegetarian. There's a hippopotamus in here. No, no, it's a rhinoceros. But nice try. Okay, my opponent played knight g, he played knight g3. That way his bishop can get out. But that knight's not good there because I can attack it. And then I'll take it. Yes. So I played h5. He didn't want me to attack his knight. So what did he do to stop me? Cry. Cry. And then what did he do? Let's call on a small child. Emily. Uh, h5 to h5. That's correct. h4. Now I can't play h5. Now I'm going to tell you something that's too hard for you, but it's way too hard for the people at home. They're going to start crying. Okay? Then, like the people watching at home, their mom's going to write me a letter. You made my son cry when he was watching the chess video, and I'm going to write back and say, well, your son's 43, so that's too bad. 
Okay, now in this position, I'm controlling this square. See? You agree, right? And he's controlling this square, but he can't put anything on this square. He can't do anything. But I can put my knight here. I can put my bishop there. I'm the best. I wonder which piece I put there, my knight or my bishop. Let me think about that. Which one didn't move yet? Right. I try to move everything once. Then I move something else. Some people, they move the same piece every move. Then all of their pieces are on the back rank. And then I beat them. Okay, so I move my bishop there. I wonder what my bishop's attacking. I think it's attacking his knight. It's attacking my queen? No, the white queen. The white queen. Did he give up his queen and then resign? Yeah. No. No. So what did he do to prevent me from... T I know what he did. He took my bishop. No. 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 Then I could take his queen and he would cry. So what did he do? You. He moved F2 to F3. He could do that, but I have a rule for my advanced students. Never play F3. Okay? F3 is a good move, but he didn't do that. He blocked with his bishop. And I played queen D7. I protected my bishop again. Wow, my bishop's protected a lot. Now, these pawns didn't move, and this pawn did move. So am I going to castle on the queen's side or the king's side? I'm going to castle on the queen's side because I'm ready to castle. But I'm not ready to castle. Here, there's a bishop in the way. And when I castle, I leave all the pawns in front of my king so my king is safe. Okay, so he played a3. If you ask me why, I'm going to say I don't know. Okay, and then I castled. So notice every move I make, every breath I take, I move a different piece every move. That way, all of my pieces moved. Okay. Also, I move forward. If I keep moving forward, he'll have to move backward, and then I'll be off the board, and then I'll win. He never moves forward. Everything he has is really is next to his king. He's not attacking any of my pieces. He's doing nothing. Okay. He played b4. No, my king. And I played bishop d6. Now I moved all of my minor pieces, and I castled. Do I ever teach you to do that? That's all I ever teach you. Okay. And he played e4. He moved the same pawn twice. And he didn't move his bishop yet. Now, if you're going to stare at this rook the whole lesson, you're going to notice it doesn't move. And then I won. Yay. Okay, I took his pawn. Did he take back or he let me win a pawn for free? No, he took back and then I cried. Okay. And then I took his knight. And he took my knight. Okay. Now, let's see. Let me think about this. Should you play in the side or the center? The center. Sorry. Yeah, the center. I wonder where the center is. Oh, there it is. That's the center, right? Okay. So I played knight to d4. That's the center. I wonder what my knight's attacking. Bishop. Bishop. I have a knight attacking the bishop. And I have a bishop attacking the bishop. All right, now, a lot of kids in the class said I'm attacking the pawn. Is that a good move? No. That's a risky move because you'll take my knight. But this is not a risky move because I'll win. So he played f3 as suggested before. What's the f3 pawn attacking? The bishop. Did I leave my bishop there and lose my bishop? No. No, I retreated like a Frenchman. Bishop e6. Wow, my opponent makes lots of pawn moves. And my opponent has a lot of pieces on the back row. Is that what I teach? No. no, but he's playing me, so that's okay. If he was my student, I would be mad. But if he's my opponent, then I figure I'll win. You with some crazy comment. Um, you're actually attacking the row. Hey, that was pretty crazy. Thank you. Good job. Yeah? All right. Uh, partial credit. Okay. Now he played bishop b2. 
and I played bishop e7. Now he made the losing move. When is it correct to make the losing move? When? I'll accept two answers. You. When you're about to lose. I won't accept that answer. You. Never. That's one answer, but there's a better answer. A much funnier one. The bathroom's over there. What's your answer? When is it correct to make the losing move? The answer is when you're playing me. Yes. Because then I win. Okay. Um, you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to win, but if you do your next move, you're going to take a deep. Uh, partial credit. Okay, now I'm attacking his pawn. Is he defending his pawn? No. How about yes? Yeah. What's defending his pawn? Well, the rook on h1. So should I take his pawn and lose my bishop? No. no. But he let me because he's a nice guy. He did what's called the Ken West. Okay, Ken West is a grandmaster who comes to the club a lot. And he told me once, you know, Ben, sometimes my opponent makes a threat and then I stop it. And then I forget about it. Then the next move, I let him do it again. He told me that's his problem. So in this position, I'm attacking his pawn, but he's defending it. So he stopped defending it. He played castles. So I said, oh boy, a free pawn. Yay. So that was good. If he wanted to castle, he could have protected his pawn again and then castled. Or he could have not castled. OK, so I'm a pawn ahead. And he attacked my knight. Did I give my knight away for nothing? Yeah. No. Did I move my knight where he could take it? Yeah. No. I played knight f5, and I have a threat that's a 2 o'clock class threat. For one o'clock, this is really hard. Let me show you how hard it is. Ow, that was hard. I better get something to drink. Mmm. Got a Long Island up that iced tea. Okay, so the knight on f5 is threatening to fork his queen and rook. Who can find it? You. Yeah, knight where? Somewhere? Whatever that square is. All right, tell me, is the square green or red? Which one? Red. red. Knight to the red square. Okay. If I do that, my knight's attacking his queen and his rook. That's called a fork. Did he let me do that? Actually, if you knew my opponent, it'd be 50 50, but he didn't let me do it. He played queen d2. Did I still go here? No, because no, he would take my knight and I would cry. So I played. Queen e7, so my queen and bishop are defending each other, and my rook is opposite his queen. Maybe one day my rook will take his queen. Maybe like on a Tuesday. Right? Okay. So he moved his queen away because he was scared. Let's see. I moved this and this and this and this and this. I wonder what piece I didn't move yet. Oh. So I played rook h6, and that's called a rook lift, unless you're Jennifer Shahadi. Then it's called a rover. I move my rook up and over, rover. And then when my rook goes here, I'm going to show his king who the boss is. The answer, Tony Danza. No, I'm just kidding. You with some great comment. So the, the rook that he castled? Yeah. The rook? Yeah. That's correct. Let's go back, even though I said I'm never going back. If I take that pawn, is my rook safe? No. What, would, what would Dustin Hoffman say? Yeah. What would Lawrence Olivier say? No. What? He would say, is it safe? And Dustin Hoffman wouldn't know what to say. Because he's just a marathon runner. He's not a spy. He doesn't know. Right? Yeah. Good. All right. So if I take his pawn, he'll take my rook. Although, knowing this guy, I might have got away with it. OK, so I played rook h6. Did he take my rook for free? No. It isn't for free because I would take his queen. I have a couple ways to do it. He played c4. What's c4? Wait, even this class knows that? Wow, I was, I was, I was expecting nothing. Yeah, 
C4 is explosive. So I gave up because he played C4. That's why I'm a grandmaster. I'm not a grandmaster at chess. I'm a grandmaster of giving up. That's why I'm getting married in two weeks. Yay. That's yeah, true. Thank you. Thank you. No, nothing. Did you guys bring the wedding gifts? You guys at home can mail a check. No, no check is too large. So, you know, raise it up. Okay. What? You. That's correct. Also, if I lost, would I be showing you that game? Terrible. Okay. So I played knight to d4. Remember when he attacked my knight and then I moved it away? Remember that? Now his pawn's not there anymore, so I put my knight back on the center. I wonder what I'm threatening. What's black threatening? Hold on. I'm threatening something. The oh, the bishop. And then, and then it forks his king and queen. And if you don't like that, you could fork the queen and rook. So that's what we call a good knight. Knight's in the center. Okay. He took my knight, and I took his bishop. Wow. Look at all of my pieces out doing stuff. And look at all of his pieces hiding on the back row. Also, this rook didn't move yet. In fact, it never moves. Wait a minute. That's a great bishop. It has lots of places to go to. No. Just, just kidding. That's the worst bishop ever. My bishop has 1,000 places to go to. I mean, 10,000. Okay. My bishop's a maniac. It has 10,000 places to go to. Would you get that one? No. All right. No talking. His bishop, boo. OK. So he attacked my bishop. Now I have a question. Should you leave pawns in front of your king? Or should you get all the pawns away from your king? Yeah, if the pawns are in front of your king, nobody's going to get you. Okay. So when the president has security guards, are they a thousand miles away? Or are they standing next to him? Yeah. So my security guards are next to my king. And he was like, oh, how about you go on vacation? We, I don't need you. Here, go here. Okay, just move away from me so my opponent can checkmate me. All right, now most of you would move your bishop away because your bishop's attacked, and the rest of you would give up your bishop because you didn't see knight takes bishop. Okay, I did something you've never heard of. It's called a pin. That was more complaint than I expected. No, 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 I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the people at home. They never heard of a pin. Okay, they're like, I have a pin right here. Ow, I stabbed myself. Okay, so this pawn is in front of his king. If I put a rook or a queen there, he can't move his pawn. Bam. Now, most of you would take the bishop, but the computer won't let me. Look at the computer not letting me. Because then he'd be in check. That's called a pin. So I'm attacking this pawn how many times? How many times is black attacking the pawn? More than one. Very good. How about a more accurate answer? I also accept pi. Not the number pi, but for pi. You. Two. two. One, two. Everybody buckle their shoe. OK. Now he's defending it once. Two is more than one. So if it's my move, I can start taking things. So he protected his pawn. King h2. And I did something you've never done and will never do. A combination. OK. I sacrificed my bishop. And then when he took it and I put him in check, he started crying. I sacrificed my bishop. Did he take with the king or the knight? The knight. The knight. If he takes with the king, that would be illegal. Took with the knight. Now I played the meanest check ever. And he was like, oh, that's not good. What's the winning move for black? Totally crushing white's open king. You in the corner. You change your mind? All right. You with the right answer. You're two thirds correct. Does it have to be checked? It does because that's the move that I made. Does it have to be checkmate? It can't be checkmate. There is no checkmate. All right. You. Right, now rook h4 also should win, but queen h4 wins more. And I'm mean. 
Now he's in check, and I'm attacking this knight a lot. Okay, so this position's so good for black. If you were playing the world champion, you might win. In fact, some of you might win in two moves. And some of you, the world champion would resign. That's how bad white's position is. My opponent gave up. Let's pretend he didn't give up. He would move his king, right? And I would go check. Notice how my rook and queen are protecting each other. What's that called? Checkmate. That's not checkmate yet. When your rook and queen are protecting each other, what do we call that? Powerful. You. Powerful's right. What? Yeah. What? Check. This is the one o'clock class, so we'll be here for a while. Uh, yes? Binary. You're cheating. You come from the two o'clock class. You're a refugee. See, the two o'clock class, okay, that's called a battery. It's also called check. It's also called powerful. All of your answers were right. How many legal moves does white have? How many possible moves? What's the only move? What can white do? Resign. Resign's the best move, but what's the possible move white can make? You with the right answer. Um, I, may, I may change my answer in a second. Well, he can't go king to g3 because my rook is defending it. So the computer won't let me. You. Um, Incorrect. You. What? 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 He can't because his king's in check by my queen. He has to get out of check. Did you ever watch the low talker episode on Seinfeld? Because you could do that. Also, what? All right, you with the right answer. Uh, you, you have the right answer. Yeah. Move his king to h1, because that's the only move. Now, here's a question that nobody can answer, because it's too hard. How many checkmates does black have? Even Ben Simon can't answer that. There's too many answers. If you close your eyes and make a legal move, it might be checkmate. That's how many checkmates there are. Okay, who said four? Me. Uh, four. Uh, I think four is right. Okay, so queen g2 is checkmate, queen h3 is checkmate, queen h4 is checkmate, and rook h4 is checkmate. I think that's it. Me. Yeah, right. so because every move is checkmate, my opponent gave up. Let's look at the piece activity. All his pieces on the back row, and his bishop can't move. All my pieces, fantastic. Nobody around my king. My king's really safe. So my king is safe. His king is unsafe. All my pieces went forward. All his pieces stayed home. So I won. Okay, then what did he do? He cried. Cry, right. He cried. Yeah. And then I gave him a copy of my book, Cry Like a Grandmaster. Okay. Then he gave a copy of his book, Cry Like a Class D Player. All right, that's Ben Simon's favorite book. Okay. Now the last game of the day was played, was it played yesterday? Let's see. No, it was played last week. Boo. Now, there's somebody who works at the club, if you can call it working, and his name is Danny Machuca. Danny Machuca gets chess lessons every day, sometimes from me, sometimes from other grandmasters. Has it affected his rating? No. Okay, because it goes in here and out there, right? I'm like, do this. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Then the next day he's like, what? Yeah. Okay, so, all right. Now, this is the most amazing game in chess history. I'm going to tell you why. When I play Danny Machuca, he always has white. He's like, I want white. He's like a little kid. Wah, I want white. Okay, in this game I had white. So I was like, whoa, what's happening? Why do I have white? So I've never had white against him. I've played him for a year. He's like, yeah, I want to have black now. And I was like, are you Danny Machuca? It turned out we watched the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and he kept doing this. But I didn't suspect anything, right? OK. So because I had white, I was very confused, because I'd never had white against him. So I blundered every move. I played so badly, it took me 19 moves to checkmate him. Wow. Yeah. So I, so I cried for a day. I'd take a day off work. Okay, they told me to take two. 
It took me so long to beat them, they felt bad for me at work. Okay, so we played the Slav defense, which is very common. And he played the A6 Slav because he played A6. See? And I played A4. And I had this position once before. My opponent went here, and we decided to play checkers instead. Yeah, none of nothing. Okay, he played bishop f5. Now let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. You see all these pawns that are in red? And you see all these pawns that are in green? Because it's like Christmas time? I'm going to tell you a shocking story. They're all protected. So this rook protects this pawn, this bishop protects this pawn, this, and, and, and so on. Okay? And when we played our game and he moved out his bishop, he unprotected one of his pawns. This one. That was protected and now it's not. I wish I could take it. How could I attack his pawn? Hold on, let me think about it. Man, how could I attack that pawn? You! I could do that, but I could put something on B3 right now. Your way works, but it takes two moves. I did it in one move. Uh, bathroom's over there. Yeah? Did I point this way and somebody over there said me? What? No, I was, I was calling on Ben Simon. No, I wasn't. Okay, queen B3 is correct. I want to take his pawn. Yummy, yummy. But he was mean. He defended his pawn. He defended it in a funny way. Not funny to you, you're the one o'clock class, but funny to like Ben Simon. Rook a7. Actually, the point of a6. Now your rook can defend your pawn. Okay, I developed my piece. Remember what I said last game? I move a different piece every move? I still do. Okay, and he played pawn takes pawn attacking my queen. I took back. Now, where did he move his bishop? Hmm. Nowhere. Nowhere. But he wanted to move his bishop, so he played e6. Now his bishop has a lot of squares. Okay. I played e4 attacking his bishop. If he takes with the knight, then I take his queen. That's because his knight is pinned. So he moved his bishop, and now I made the winning move. Now, I, I say this in chess classes all the time. When you're pinning your opponent's piece, you want to attack it with another piece because it's pinned. So I'm pinning his knight to his queen. That means if his knight moves, I take his queen. How can I attack his knight again? You, Frank, with the right answer. Um, right, how old are you, Frank? Five. You're five, you're already five? When did you turn five? A long time ago? Just this month. This month? Yeah. Solid. Happy birthday. It was November 6th. November 6th? You're, that's two months after my birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, but it was within a month. See, he turned five in November. You guys turned five like at least a week or two ago. All right, so Frank said E5. Now I'm attacking his knight. Shh. I'm attacking his knight. If his knight moves away, I take his queen. He attacked my bishop, and I have a funny story. In this position, he was thinking, hmm, if my opponent attacks my knight, I'm going to attack their bishop, then I'm going to attack their bishop again. But when he played bishop g6, he blocked his pawn, right? But he didn't realize that till afterwards. It was very funny. So when he attacked my bishop when I went here, he was intending on going here. Then he saw that he can't do that. He was like, aw. Okay. So now he's losing a knight, and he should lose the game. But he was playing me, so he had a chance. So he played queen b6, attacking my pawn. And I was like, what's worth more, a knight or a pawn? A knight. So I took the knight, and he took my pawn. Now, I hallucinated, okay? Don't do that. I said, hmm, if I play rook b1, he'll take with his bishop. 
So that's not good. And if I play rook a2, and he checks me, and I block the check, then I'm losing my queen. I forgot my bishop is protecting my queen. So that's just a queen trade. And I forgot my queen was protected. So if I had played rook a2, I would just be up a knight. And he thought I would play rook a2. But I didn't see my queen was defended by my bishop. So I played a terrible move, rook d1, and he pinned my knight. Bishop b4, uh-oh. So my knight's attacked twice, and I can't defend it. If I defend with the rook, then he takes my rook. So that, that didn't work too well. If I defend this way, he also takes my rook. So I'm going to lose my knight. Luckily, I took his knight already. OK, so I took his pawn. He checked me. You see how I'm in check? How did I get out of check? What did I do? Is it checkmate, or can I get out of check? How did I get out? Knight to d2. Right. OK, now his rook's attacked, so he moved it. OK, now queen c5 is winning, but I played a bad move, bishop d3. And he did something you never heard of called removing the defender. OK, and I've told you this story before. You want to rob a bank, and then you're like, oh, it's Sunday. I guess I'll go to kids' class. Okay? And you go to the bank, and you're all ready to rob the bank, but there's a security guard there. So you go home and cry. What you should have done is brought a donut with you. Then you put the donut outside. The security guard goes and gets it. Then you rob the bank. Okay? So this is the security guard, my queen. If he takes my bishop, I'll take with the queen. right? So he made my queen move away. He played b5. And wherever I move my queen, my bishop's not defended. <laughs> but I can attack his rook. And I did. Now the game should end in a draw if he plays correctly. Did he play correctly? No. Does he ever play correctly? No. no. Good job. If only Danny was here. OK. Watch how it's a draw. It's the kind of draw you guys like. It's where you move back and forth forever. Then you all start laughing. So he could take my bishop. Some of you think this is checkmate, but his rook would take my queen. That would be bad. So I can take his rook. Now he takes my knight with check. Is that checkmate? No. Now I take his bishop. And now he checks me forever. Check. 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 If you don't like that, you can check on A1 also. Okay. And that's called perpetual check. The same position occurred 3 million times. And that's a draw. OK. So he could have drawn against me. And his rating's 1,800. And my rating's 2,570. So he would have liked that. He would have been like, I drew a grandmaster. That's all he had to do. But he played for the win, also known as playing for the loss. He played bishop takes d4. And actually, that move wins for black, except that it loses. I have one move that wins, and all my other moves lose. He didn't see the move that wins, so he thought he was winning. He was like, oh boy, I'm attacking Ben's queen. I'm defending my rook. I'm attacking his bishop. I'm up a pawn. He was really happy. Then I made the move that he didn't see. Queen d6. Queen d6 threatens checkmate, which he didn't see, and threatens queen takes knight check, winning both of his rooks, which he did see. But if he plays knight d7, which stops both threats, then I play checkmate, because my bishop defends my queen. So in this position, the computer, which gives a point evaluation, like plus 1 is a pawn, plus 5 is a rook, it says I'm plus 24. So the computer likes my position now. Here, the computer says it's a draw. Here it says white's up 24. So his last move wasn't good. Okay. Now, Danny saw queen takes knight check, but he didn't see queen d8 mate. So he defended his knight with his bishop via an x-ray. If I take his knight, he takes my queen. If I take his bishop, he takes my queen. So he thought he was winning still. He's like, yay, I'm still winning. 
and then I played mate, then, then he's not winning. <laughs> right. Now, just like in the previous games, I move all my pieces, and he keeps his knight here because that's safe there. Okay? And because I moved my bishop out, it was protecting my queen. When the bishop and queen protect each other, that's called a... Uh, you said it before, that's so why I'm calling on you. Uh, battery. A battery, okay. So, and also, he has a battery, okay. And I like to put pepper on my food, but he likes to put salt, so he had a salt and battery, right? None of the kids got it, none of them, zero. And like half their parents, okay. The other half were at Starbucks. Yeah, and they're like, I would like a salt and battery, please. And they're like, this is Starbucks. Okay, but it's Christmas time, so they get in line. So when I was at my chess house, my chess house, I ordered on my phone Starbucks, and then I was like, la, 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 la. You know, it's the Christmas season. Then I walked over to Starbucks, and there were five billion people in line, more than half the earth. And my drink was sitting there. I got my drink, and I left. Everybody's like, what? How do you do that? And they said, did you order from your phone? And I said, no, I'm a grandmaster. My drink's just waiting here. And they were like, oh, OK. And what did I say to the Starbucks people after I grabbed my drink? Nothing. I said, class is dismissed. 